Today we've got a great revenge story that shows you why you should always change your password regularly. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, for the longest time we've had issues with Nextdoor. Their kids are now riding dirt bikes along our fence line, so my boyfriend threw a heap of anchovies in their evaporated cooler. So for about 10 years we've lived on the street. Everyone else in the street is amazing, but the house next door are nothing but trouble. We've had an intervention order on them for a couple of years now. They've had a heap of breaches of them and charges. About three months ago, we had a siege next door. That meant police in our backyard for eight years on a hot day. About a week later, one of the kids got a dirt bike and they've been riding along the fence every night. So my boyfriend, who's a great aim, while having a few drinks after a pizza night, started to throw a couple in their evaporated cooler. He got about four or five in. This was about two weeks ago and we've had some good weather since, which means they've used it. Thursday, they had someone looking at the unit inside, but not the roof unit. It's so funny when we hear it boot up and within minutes, they have to turn it off. I think they meant police in your backyard for eight hours, not eight years, but having lived in a place that's mostly very warm year round, this wouldn't be just an effective revenge. This would be a pretty devastating revenge because people kind of need the coolers. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, don't want to deliver a wheelchair? How about two wheelchairs? Earlier this week, my mom accidentally inflicted petty revenge upon our postman. My physical health has been declining due to chronic illnesses, and it's made it hard to go out and do things. My mom noticed how much being housebound was affecting me, so she ordered me a lightweight wheelchair and made dinner plans for us Sunday night. On the day the wheelchair was supposed to be delivered, the postman left a redelivery note saying it was too heavy. We were a bit skeptical as the package weight was 44.5 pounds, 20.18 kg, but no biggie. It was only Monday and I don't want anyone getting hurt on my behalf. We fill out the online redelivery form with additional instruction, letting them know that they can leave it in the driveway if that's easier and call it a day. Tuesday evening rolls around, still nothing. We fill out the paper one just in case and leave it in the mailbox. Thursday, it still hasn't been delivered. My mom anxiously orders another wheelchair with one day delivery, assuming it would be delivered by another service. Well, hopefully the same postman isn't the one that's going to have to come pick it up and take it back. Assuming, of course, whatever return they try to do has a service that would come pick it up for you. Our next story is, try to threaten me over a $26 expense report? I'll make sure everyone knows. So I posted this in r slash work advice but did so haphazardly, so reposting here in a thoughtful manner after deleting the original. I worked for 8 years at one of the largest advertising companies in the world. Moved up to middle management but built a lot of relationships with very high execs, C-suite, regional presidents, etc. due to my specialty and reputation. Left in November of 2022 for my dream job, left on good terms, turned everything in, followed all the procedure and exit interview, including cutting up my corporate Amex as instructed, working virtually, my company was to cancel the card. Fast forward to this week, I get a nasty gram email to my personal email from the guy who runs all corporate Amex for the old company. Your Amex ending in so and so is 68 days past due in the amount of $25.95 and needs to be paid ASAP or face the consequences. We will not pay late charges, this is your responsibility. CC'd in the email were a number of mid-level finance folks. I laughed and then spent an hour crafting a snarky response to all and added in the chief people officer, the CFO, the regional president of the Americas, and the global CEO, BCC, a couple of folks still at the company who would get a kick out of it. I know my email would get through, as I stay in touch with all. Essentially, not my problem, shoulda cancelled it. It's fraud, on Lyft. I haven't traveled to where the Lyft ride is for years. Did someone check to see why no activity for almost a year, then boom, charge? Did HR read the email and say, oh crap, he left? Nope. So, over $25.95. I know all involved read it, including the CEO, as all responded with either disregard, hope you're well, etc. The CEO simply responded, well played. At the rate these people bill out, it's advertising, everyone has a billable rate, I'm guessing it cost them around a thousand dollars to read and respond. The kicker? Catching up with a regional president over email? 
I made a sale for the company I'm currently at. Winner. I mean, it's just a relief when you find yourself in a situation like this where you know you're absolutely in the right, when it's just an easy slam dunk where you're going to go, all right, I'm going to point out how ridiculous this is, and I'm going to the boss's boss's boss of the guy who gave me this grief to show them. So satisfying for them to be so kind to throw you that alley-oop to dunk right on them. Our next story is, ex-roommate was so very dumb. This was around 2000 or so. I was living in a pretty sweet two-bedroom apartment right above where I was working at the time. My sister's boyfriend had recently moved to town and needed a place to stay. We were already kind of friends, so I gave him a bedroom. Rent was split, but it was still my place overall. He had a pretty annoying habit of making food, then eating it in his room and leaving the dirty dishes in there. I bugged him about it for a while, until he finally started at least putting them in the sink. Still dirty, but at least accessible. Eventually, I got pretty mad about this and basically told him to clean the freaking dishes. His reply? That's not happening. Okay, then. For the whole time he'd been living there, he was allowed to use my computer. Pretty cool gaming rig I'd built to check his emails and crap. After he said that garbage about the dishes, I had a little idea. When he left for work that day, I hopped on the internet and found a free tiny program called Boot Locker. It basically locked the computer with a black screen with a password prompt. No password, no computer. It even had an option to lock the BIOS. So if the PC was rebooted, it would ask for the password before even booting. There was also an option to include some words below the password prompt. I chose clean dishes equals checked email. Then I went about my day. Needless to say, when I got home later, he finished work and was there before me. The dishes were clean, but he was not happy. Poor whittle baby. Cue his revenge. He had a pretty fancy Sony TV that was in the living room. I had it hooked up to the computer so movies could be watched, games played, etc. on that sweet big screen. 32 inches was way bigger than my monitor. Plus, we had cable from work downstairs. After the bootlocker thing, he thought he would get back at me by activating the parental controls on his TV. I get home after work, he's not home, and go to watch some TV. No go without the four digit code. Took me roughly two minutes online to find, what do I do if I forgot my Sony TV code? The look on his face when he got home and I was watching TV was freaking golden. He moved out not too long afterwards. I think OP's understating what they were using that computer for because clearly they weren't just checking their email. If that were the case, they would just do it on their phone, right? Surely. Or like they could go and spend like a hundred bucks on some cheapo laptop or even a micro computer, one of those small boxes that you can literally put in a backpack. If it was just emails, this wouldn't have been that big of a problem for him for sure. Our next story is, want to wake me up? I'll wake you up. A few years ago, I used to have the same last seven digits of a phone number, but different area code, as someone in my city who was probably in his college years, I was late 20s, early 30s, and happened to have the same first name as me. I can tell you this led to more than one confused phone call. First two months after I figured out what was going on, it was kind of funny, then it started to get a little annoying. Calls on weekdays at 3 to 4 a.m. from drunk kids looking for their buddy or something. Sometimes I'd get in arguments with these people, trying to tell them that they've got the wrong person, only for them to call back a few minutes later, still drunk, still dialing the wrong number. I was able to block some numbers, but then I'd get calls from other numbers and so on. After one particularly nasty call, I decided if they were gonna keep waking me up, I'd get even. See, I had to get up at 7 to 8 a.m. for work each day, so when I got woken up or called multiple times by the same person at 3 to 4 to 5 a.m., I took it upon myself to call them in the morning to make sure they got home safe or something like that. Most of the time, they wouldn't pick up on the first call. I mean, I can't blame them, right? They were up just a few hours ago. So I'd go brush my teeth, maybe make breakfast, and I'd call them back a few minutes later long enough to let them doze back off if the first call had woken them up and they ignored it. This would rinse and repeat until I got someone on the line. Usually it was an extremely groggy, oh god I'm hurting so bad, hello, or a ticked off who the freak is this at this hour, that sort of thing. I would give them my first name, which is apparently someone they know because they were looking for him last night, and tell them I was outside ready to drive them to work, hurry their butts up, 
then hang up and block the number. Then I'd go about my day chuckling to myself about that poor person being awoken out of a slumber only to suddenly think they were late for work and wonder how long it took them to figure out what was going on. The number of late night wrong number calls died down considerably after a few months of that. Problem is, turns out OP's name is Jenny and their number is 8675309. In reality, is the problem here that this guy went around giving the phone number out without the area code? Because now that nobody uses landlines anymore, that just doesn't make much sense. Our next story is, leave me to do all the work and then stand by and comment? I used to work for a small delivery company and I had to deal with the organizing of the delivery runs. It was a time-based operation and I was constantly up against it. We had gotten a new system that only I was trained up to use at the time and it took me a while to get everything sorted. This girl had went for the same position as me but obviously never got it. When the delivery runs were being printed, she offered to check over them, but any slight mistake, I mean even a typo, was loudly broadcast to the whole office. Another mistake! Her boyfriend worked there also and the two of them would laugh among themselves. It was all brought on from petty jealousy. She had been there longer, but I'd got the promotion and she didn't like that. Now, I know how hard I had to work in order to keep on top of things, but she didn't. I would spend any free minute doing prep work, because if you started a new day without doing any, you were going to fall behind and in the transport industry, this can lead to losing contracts over late deliveries. I had a week's holiday due, and she was to cover my work. She was making it seem like it was no big deal and she would breeze through it. So I offered no help and instead planned my petty revenge. I left work on the Friday and told my workmate, who was and still is a good friend of mine, that I had done no prep whatsoever. This girl would have to come in and start afresh. My friend called me on the Friday of my annual leave laughing. Apparently my colleague had to get her boyfriend over to help her, and the both of them were stressing all day and not getting the work finished until 10pm every day. Not good at all for a small transport company. Monday morning came and I was called into the managing director's office. It was a small company and his office was down the hall. I didn't know what to expect and was getting myself prepped for defending myself. He looked over at me and said, I owe you an apology. I had no idea the amount of work that was involved. After our chat, I congenially asked my colleague how she got on in my absence and her face was priceless. Petty? Yes. Worth it? Definitely. See, I think in that moment it became pretty clear why OP got that promotion and she didn't. And after a day of hard work, OP can go back and relax and think, yeah, they definitely earned it. Our next story is, be a gold digger? No holiday for you. Me and my friend Bella had a falling out. To summarize it, we had a huge argument about how she was using me for my money and we ended up being thrown out of the restaurant we were in. It went on after I found out she took it to social media and started trashing me and calling me a wealthy snob. And she even went as far as calling my mom a gold digger because she knows that my mom comes from a significantly less fortunate background. This enraged my father and mother and they cut contact with her and all the family who were defending her because she's just expressing herself and it's not that serious. This has also caused a rift in our friend group. Some of my oldest friends are against me, just like she wanted. She got her revenge, so now it was my turn to get mine. Our families had an upcoming holiday trip because we've known each other for years. She's my oldest friend, and our families just blended well together. There was 11 of us coming on the trip. Me and her, two. My parents, two. Her parents, two. My siblings, two sisters and a brother. Her siblings, two brothers. My dad, since he's the breadwinner, pays for the whole trip, excluding itinerary, food and drink, etc., and everyone else pays for extra expenses. Well, since our falling out, I had the bright idea to disinvite her and her parents, since they were the only ones who were defending her. Her brothers didn't get involved, and her oldest brother even offered to pay for some of the expenses that she racked. I obviously declined, but it was nice anyway. Both of the brothers are married, so I told them that they could invite their spouses but that left only one ticket. So you know what I did? I took a photo of the ticket and put it in an envelope with a note that said, this is the closest you'll ever get to coming on the trip. Have a great life, gold digger. P.S. I invited your ex to the trip so I hope you're happy. Heart. 
I didn't really invite her ex, but I wanted to make her think that I did so she would get angry. And believe me, she did. She blew up my phone on social media since I blocked her phone number. And she was furious. She was swearing, crying, screaming, and so much more. She sent me texts, voice messages, tried calling me. It was a doozy. I even had to deactivate my Instagram because she would keep creating new accounts just to annoy me, and it worked. Instead of what she thinks, I invited my cousin on the trip, 17-year-old female, and she was over the moon. She even took it to Twitter and posted something along the lines of, cancel all of my plans in April because I will be overseas. Yeah, I think there's really no love lost after they started trashing your whole family. Saying these incredibly out-of-pocket things about your mom for literally no reason other than, what, jealousy? Easy to cut off somebody that's going to act like that to your face. I mean, if they're saying that to you, imagine what they're thinking or saying when they're not around you. Our next story is, move my stuff and yell at me for losing it? I'll make you doubt yourself. This happened two years ago and finally has an ending. I, now 17-year-old female, have a father that is very strict about tidiness. He likes things to be placed in a very particular way. The thing is, I like to organize my room my own way. Our ways are very different. When I was 14, I kept the books and files on my desk in a very particular way. It was organized based on usage and importance, as I have ADHD and that's just the easiest way for me to find things. Because of this, to the average eye, it looks a little bit like just a really tall pile of random stuff I put there to avoid looking at. To be fair, I had left it untouched for four months, but that's mostly because the pile consisted of stuff I needed for my summer and winter job, so I only really used it during those times. That being said, my father didn't like that, so one day when I was at school, he moved parts of my pile he deemed himself as unimportant. Honestly, I didn't really notice for a while, but then one day I decided that I'd scan some important files for my job so that I won't lose them only to find that the entire folder full of files had disappeared. I looked around and even looked at my brother and mother's desk, but it had completely vanished. I asked my dad because he moves stuff a lot, but when I did, he started to yell at me. He said that I never knew how to keep my things properly, that I was lazy, careless, forgetful, unorganized, etc., and that I was delusional for thinking that someone else had moved it. He said that me having a job was a waste because I would never learn responsibility, because I couldn't even bother to be responsible over something important, something like that. He then ordered me to go look for it until I found it, or I'd get punished more or yelled at more. Of course, I didn't find it. He held the fact that I'd lost that folder over my head for the next two years and would yell at me occasionally about it whenever I misplaced something. Then, one day, when he tasked the entire family to help find his important document, I found a small box placed behind four larger boxes in the storage area of my house. Peeking out of it was a sticker I made for the lost folder. When I opened it, there it was in all its glory. Finally, I had proof that he moved it, because it was his storage behind boxes filled with his stuff. I was both relieved and livid. He moved it. He called me delusional, crazy, irresponsible. He yelled at me about it for two years while I cried each time. After I showed him, he didn't even apologize. He said that I should have kept it better, and if I did, I wouldn't have lost it. Here's the petty revenge. Since that day about a year ago, I had started moving little bits and pieces of his stuff. Not to obscure places, because then I would be found out immediately, but a 1-2 to two meter radius between where he actually put it, put down his cup of water, and then left to take a phone call. It'll move from his desk to the random portable shelf thing he put some of his stuff on top of, put down his phone to go to the toilet, one side of the desk to the other, his vape, from the shelf to the pen holder he had on his desk. His shirts, yes he puts them in order. I'd change the order of the shirts which had the same color. I'd switch the old shoes at the bottom of his shoe rack every once in a while. He doesn't use them, but he notices that something moved and tries to figure out what. Little things like that for an entire year. He would start yelling every time, claiming that he swore he knew that someone took his stuff. But why would someone take his stuff only to put it a meter away. 
He stopped yelling around five months in and started commenting on how he was getting old and starting to forget where he put stuff. But anyway, during this year where I hid stuff, I was diagnosed with ADHD finally, and my dad started to learn stuff about ADHD and realized that my piling thing was actually really common. He also started to notice the patterns in which I put my stuff and commented less on it, even when I knew he wanted to. He actually went to a session with my therapist to ask more questions. Turns out, most of the things he had issues with me about were all symptoms of my ADHD. Who could have known, right? Me, but it's chill now. It was also during this year that we realized that we were both mature enough to have a sit-down conversation about things like adults. And or almost adults. We worked things out between us and promised to not drive each other crazy on purpose. So after an entire year of moving his stuff, I confessed to him that he wasn't developing sudden short-term memory loss. He just had a very petty daughter. He said he figured it out a month before I told him because he started to notice that when our relationship as father and daughter got better, his memory would get better too. Oh well, better luck next petty revenge I guess. Sorry if the ending isn't that great but I liked it so I wanted to share. Might not be that satisfying for those reading but I found it satisfying. Being petty is fun. Also, if you know me from my previous petty revenge story, things are better with my mom too. We're chill now for the most part. Yay to happy endings. Even if the revenge tends to be on the more petty side, usually there is like some kind of bad blood or negative thing that's still kind of permeating that caused the revenge to happen. It's nice and it's refreshing to hear a story of my father, who was giving me grief because of my ADHD that he just wasn't aware of, learned, and we actually grew together. Plus, him reaching this point in that revenge where he's like, well, you know what, my memory is finally just going, is pretty funny, and it must have been a huge relief for him to realize he wasn't going crazy. Our next story is the 10 euros that really weren't worth it. So one day at a gas station, this guy comes up to me looking all sorry for himself. He's like, hey, can you spare 10 euros? I need to put gas in my car to visit my dying mother. He even gives me his number, swearing up and down he'll pay me back. Now, I may be naive, but I wasn't born yesterday. I knew the chances of seeing that 10 euros again were slim to none. But hey, what if his story was true? I couldn't be the reason someone didn't get to say goodbye to their mom, so I lent him the cash. I get home and surprise surprise, radio silence from Mr. Gas Money. A few days later I reach out and he's all, oh, I totally forgot, I'll pay you back. Yeah, right. After a few rounds of this, it's obvious I'm not getting my money back and eventually he ghosts me. But I'm patient. I wait a few weeks and then spring into action. I hit up all the popular second-hand selling websites and start posting ads. I'm talking hot ticket items, cars, iPhones, GPUs, back when they cost an arm and a leg, cozy houses, job offers, all priced to sell, but still believable. For the contact info, I used his number and threw in a name with a cheesy pun. Think Owen Money. Get it? Owing money? Ha. Huh. Two days later, I call him from my girlfriend's phone. I can't even get a word out before he starts yelling at me to leave him alone. Looks like my plan worked. Some of the ads even stayed up for months. The only bummer, besides losing that 10 euros, was getting my main account banned on one of the sites. Probably got flagged for using the same IP as my little sting operation. But hey, a small price to pay for a taste of petty revenge. Now my question is, did OP spend more than 10 euros of their time trying to get this revenge? I mean, I suppose revenge can be a little bit of a hobby. I guess as long as OP was having fun the whole time doing it. Our next story is Always Change Your Password. This is a story of why you should always change your password at least every few months and never use easy to remember passwords, etc. Backstory I was the IT manager at a small television network. I worked there for about five years till I became disabled for totally unrelated reasons. I worked at the corporate office. It was a pretty good job and I liked it, but of course there are jerks everywhere. Let's just say that me and the local station manager didn't get along. She would blame all her problems why she hadn't got her work done on the computers. If she hadn't done something that her boss told her to by email, she would blame me because she didn't get the email. 
when I ticked her off because I wouldn't let her do something, like when I banned eBay network wide, she would have her kid load down the receptionist's computer with all kinds of spam, malware, viruses, etc. I had complained about it to the upper management, but she still argued it was really my fault. Me and my employees could fix every computer at 23 stations, but we could never fix that receptionist's computer. After I had to quit working for health reasons, I never messed with the company because it was a great job. A couple years later, one day I was at the grocery store in the produce section. I'd seen some heads of lettuce. Lettuce, I remembered. That's the station manager's password. I don't know why I remembered, but hey, it was time for some fun. After I got home from the store, I took my time, made something to eat, got a beer, and comfortably sat down at my computer. We always used our initials as our emails at the company.tv, so it wasn't hard to remember her email because her initials were, of all things, FMB. No, really, that's what they were. I went to the web interface for their email server, typed in FMB and lettuce, and logged in. BAM! She hadn't changed her password in over two years and it was such an easy word to remember. I don't know why I hadn't thought of it before. Maybe I just wanted to forget her. But that's too bad for her now. Well, now what? I had to think about this. Should I hack into her files on the network servers? No, that's a lot of work. So I looked through her emails. There were some that looked like important documents, some conversations with other employees, and some spam. I thought I would delete all her emails, but decided against it. It could look like there was a problem with her email account, then they might delete it and create it again. She might pick a new password. So I just deleted one email that looked really important and logged out. So I sat back and thought about it. It took me over two weeks to figure out what I wanted to do. It was a very enjoyable two weeks, I might add. I am very patient when it comes to freaking with people. I got that from my seriously ownery father, so I can just delete an important email here and there but not all of them. Just do it once in a while to start arguments over her email. I can take my time and enjoy this. Something fun to do every so often. So every other week on a random weekday, I logged in and deleted an important looking email. Sometimes too. This was to establish a consistent pattern of her blaming IT for her crap, which I am sure didn't stop when I quit. I just wanted to make it a more regular pattern. I did that for about 5 months. After that I stepped it up. I started doing it every week, especially every other Thursday night so it looked like she was lazy on Fridays. Although not every Thursday, the weeks in between were a random day so it wasn't too obvious. I did that for about 3 months. One week after enjoying freaking with her for the better part of a year, I said to heck with it. I deleted an important looking email every day that week. The following Monday, I couldn't log in. The email address wasn't there anymore. Why did her email address get deleted? My suspicions were confirmed when I talked to a friend of mine that still worked for the station manager. She got fired for blaming not getting her work done on IT. My friend volunteered that info because she knew I would like to hear it. I didn't tell my friend I did it. As a bonus, my friend, the assistant station manager, got promoted to station manager. It was great she got fired, but I still miss freaking with her every week. When you have a little lunch break for a while and you want to just do something quick and easy to keep your mind occupied, I'm sure that was like the perfect timing for OP to pop onto this person's email and select what looks like the most important email of the day to delete. I could get why you're having fun with that and all of a sudden being sad that it's over. But you know what they say or whatever, smile because it happened. Our next story is Revenge on Coworker. Hey guys, so this petty revenge happened just a couple of days ago at work. Thought I'd share since reading a few posts that reminded me of it. So a little backstory, I work at a body shop and there's a dealership right beside us. We share a lunchroom, which is where the petty revenge takes place. This tech we'll call Mark. So Mark is one of those techs that is always grumpy, partly due to the fact that he hates working as a tech. He's also a pretty unlikable person. A lot of the techs try to stay out of his way and don't engage with him. Whenever I go for lunch sometimes, he'll come by for lunch as well. He has no manners at all, he chews really loudly, when he sips from his drink he gulps it where you can actually hear it go down his throat, kind of hard to ignore that, and a real pet peeve of mine. I knew asking him would resolve nothing, but thought I'd try anyway and ask nicely. He rudely replies, 
Well then, maybe you shouldn't take lunch when I'm here. I try to resolve it peacefully, but words don't have any effect on him. Here's where the petty revenge happens. Next time I was having lunch, I made sure to come in after him. He always has a set time he comes for lunch, so it was easy to plan out. I come into the lunchroom with the biggest grin I have on the inside. Mark the grumpy tech has no idea what's about to hit him. As I start my lunch, I chew really loudly, and when I drink, I make sure I gulp it so you can hear it go down my throat. After about five minutes of chewing loudly, he finally looks up to me and rudely says, Where are your manners? Didn't your parents teach you to eat with your mouth closed? With food still in my mouth, I just reply with a, No. I time my lunch just before his for a couple of days and just continue to chew loudly and gulp my drink. On day three, I decide to take my lunch before he comes. When he shows up, I didn't hear him chew loudly or gulp his drink. Safe to say I think he learned his lesson. Sorry if the post was too long. I mean, I guess I'm wondering, did nobody really call him out on it or did nobody teach him the manners? Or honestly, maybe he just got too comfortable with where he was that he didn't realize he was even doing that. But now that they were exposed to OP doing that time and time again, it seems like they're pretty hyper aware about it now. So ultimately, I think for everybody else's sanity in the lunchroom, OP kind of did everybody a service there. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another awesome revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.